Good evening and welcome to the Eurogen webinar programme. My name is Michelle Batty and I'm the manager of the European Reference Network that we call Eurogen. And Eurogen deals with rare eurogenital diseases and complex conditions. Eurogen is one of the 24 ERNs that were created by the European Commission in 2017. Um, and the aim for us as a network is to collaborate using a clinical patient management system, which is a secure IT platform that allows our experts to conduct virtual multidisciplinary meetings on particularly complex or difficult cases so that we can provide virtual advice all over the EU for free. We also collaborate on education and training activities like this webinar programme and we also have an ERN clinical exchange program. We're also working on building a, an EURGEN registry, so we hope that that will be very helpful for research purposes going forward. Um, so now I'd uh, just like to say a few words about this evening's webinar. Uh, today's webinar focuses on post-prostatectomy -prostat urinary incontinence and the surgical management of complex cases. Um, it's an absolute honour for us to have uh, not one but four experts here with us this evening. Um, it's going to be chaired by Professor Emilio Sacco from the Agostino Gemelli Academic Hospital Foundation in Rome, which is one of our 57 uh, healthcare provider members. Uh, Professor Sacco's research interests cover male and female dysfunctions of the lower urinary tract, prolapse surgery, renal cell carcinoma, and robotic assisted surgery. Uh, the webinar will have three presentations and the focus will be on the surgical management of complex, non-ideal male patients with post-prostatectomy urinary incontinence, as the management of these cases uh, requires very high levels of surgical expertise. Uh, so along with Emilio, the other presenters are Dr. Christian Gozzi from the Marion Clinic in Bolzano, Italy, Dr. Alessandro Giamo from the Department of Neuro Urology, wow. University Hospital at the City of Health and Science of Turin, uh, and their hospital has recently joined the Eurogen Network, and also Dr. Roberto Olianas from the Department of Urology in the Leuenenberg Hospital in Germany. So without further ado, thank you so much uh, all for sharing your expertise with us and uh, thank you. Um, and we hope everyone enjoys this evening's webinar. Thank you. Over to you, Emilia. Thank you very much, Michelle, for the, this introduction. Welcome, everyone. So in this webinar, we will talk about vosprostatectomy urinary incontinence, but in particular, we wanted to focus on the management of complex cases. First, because to increase knowledge about rare and complex conditions is, uh, is one of the mission of European reference networks. And secondly, because complex cases represent a significant proportion of uh, post-prostatectomy incontinent patients, such as patients with severe incontinence, irradiated patients, uh, patients with recurrent ureter stricture, bladder dysfunctions, or previous failed treatments. So, um, I have no conflict of interest. You already know the program. We will start with the presentation about fixed males link by Christian Gozzi, and then we will have a presentation by Alessandro Giammo on adjustable sling, and then finally Roberto Lianas with artificial urinary sphincter. There will be a question time at the end. So we can launch the first presentation by Christian Gozzi on fixed maze link, please. Um, Leo, Roberto, Alessandro. Incontinence surgery of a high level for complex cases and of uh, advantages and limits. This is my disclaimer. And this is the condition about who has to talk. Only in part, the atrogenic problem 
and uh, we have to put in all our experience to repair that and disastrous conditions. The high probability, if you look at this perineum, it comes out from this picture. And if you look at the perineum with that prostate, how mobile it is. And this, this is probably an extreme, extremist uh, case, but uh, this scene our our uh, our field and that we work this hypermobility we are another radiologic after uh, uh, catheter removal after radical prostatectomy uh, and uh, you move you see this movement this hypermobility if we see this hypermobility uh, this is a condition to repair with, uh, with stabilize, like the uh, things do in the, in the female uh, surgery. And uh, here another uh, picture from retrograde insufflation. You see the position of elevating the ureter, the bulbs behind the ureter. You can see that it depends from this position if it's open or closed. There are only a few solutions of digital swing of swing to fix its link and adjustable device for a very heterogeneous patient population. Yes, the conditions are virgin or endoscopic or both pretreated incontinent patients after look here at herpix and uh, more nerve sparing unilateral or not with or without use of diathermy. Thermic partial damage of exaggerated uh, use of diathermy uh, on the dorsal plexus uh, and uh, the panels. And consequent uh, membranous ureter atrophy, anastomotic dissimilar tissues, laser neuropathy, and others, and others, various neurologic disorders, myasthenia, pre-existent. Same patients irradiated with hormonal or chemotherapeutic treatment, the failed singular or multiple incontinent surgery, with different age, BMI, and performance status. Compare a few methods with such heterogeneous. Incontinent population is difficult. We have as indicator for a successful sling implant, fixed sling implant, the dynamic cystoscopy with perineal elevation test. We, elevate, we evaluate leak points. Sphincter, mobility, prolapse, contractility, active, passive, and reposed. Bladder activity, functional, and structural disorders. Anastomo check at anastomotic region and uh, consider uh, for perfect sling mediated realignment. The data before prostatectomy. Before prostatectomy, probably. It can be pre-existent tissue urgency, noresis, other conditions, pelvic injury, urethrotomy, or urethroplasty, pre-turf or tour, tur bladder, tur prostate, PPH therapy, difference, pelvic surgery, radiation, neurological disorders. We have data of prostatectomy, which surgical center, if you are high volume, uh, a surgeon in incontinence, you know different problems in different uh, centers. Surgical technique, approach, data, 
time they will blood loss recovery data so you can feel that uh, uh, with experience uh, various problems and uh, catheter permanence difficult catheter removal cosmotic disorders incontinence at discharge other surgeries the physical adenomectomy etc etc Otherwise, we have we have anamnestic data, important data, post prostatectomy, primary or secondary daytime, daytime or nocturnal incontinence, stress incontinence, urgency or mixed, great incontinence physiotherapy and effects, medication and effects, stomatic stenosis relative or high grade treated with different methods, and. Uh, other uh, conditions like penile prosthesis, erectile dysfunction. It, uh, uh, it is uh, important to know it. And other data for decision making are for previous incontinence surgeries. Like biking agents, proact, it's a uh, herbal biking, so you risk uh, to pass through this uh, balloon uh, spaces and uh, risk infectious pubes links, events, big meshes like wheel two or combinated adjustable devices like Argos atops and artificial sphincters, AMS, safety and others. Anamnestic bladder data, capacity of just infections, hematuria, nocturnal continence quality, climacturia, hero flow, urodynamics, fecal incontinence, differentiation between liquid and gas is frequently affected. Dynamic cystoscopy is essential. Without, it's difficult to indicate. And we have these findings. It's important to repeat. I, I, you have to know at which level the anastomosis is. The local stitch is different, it can be higher or down, and you have to really alienate uh, the, the membranous urethra to the anastomosis, otherwise, you have obstruction. All these findings are very, very important to find the right solution for the patients and also for the postoperative uh, treatment. It's, it's important to know uh, the capacity and contractions during the cystoscopy, uh, sphincter aspect and the response of elevation and coordination of the patient in the active contraction. We have uh, different conclusions. If there are misanalytic data, the dynamic cystoscope findings are convincing for residual sphincter activity in expert hands from a high volume ex reconstructive surgeon. Agnes Mainsling can be planted from a minimal form of incontinence like climacteria until moderate and severe forms of incontinence. Also, extreme forms of incontinence, severe incontinence without tumor spontaneous victorition. Colleagues without experience should treat only virgin relic prostatectomized patients without nocturnal incontinence and with clear difference between relatively better and the meridian continence and worse situation in the afternoon and preserve severe and complicated cases to expert colleagues. Incontinence surgery must be a high volume surgery if we don't want to uh, um, make the same experience like the female uh, incontinence surgery. Finally, so called fixed slings can, in expert hands, be regulated in cases with not ideal primary implantation, shortening or elongating vulnerable arms laterally from the bulk, respectively. 
or with the seconds being at you know, the right positions. A take home message can be reconstructive surgery should be done by expert high volume surgeons. Identification with the patient helps to find the best solution. In case of good residual sphincter activity, reflect to use fixed sling chemacturia, mild, moderate, and severe diurnal incontinence are potentially indications for fixed sling repair. In expert hand sling, so called fixed is adjustable as it can be redone and does not preclude to use other device in the future. Worse incontinence is in the afternoon is a good point pro sling. In the case of important nocturnal incontinence without evident residual sphincter function, do not use a fixed sling. Now we have a few pictures on finally on erosion for a sling here and here irradiated. We can repair these problems, so it's important that you put slings only if you can repair the urethras. Also in the sphincter case, you have here a case with a with a fistula after erosion, and you have to close to find this fistula. To close this fistula and then to uh, decide if you can reboot a sphincter or if your cranially, if the sphincter is put it in the mid distal bulbary region, you can cranially put uh, also a sling. It's possible. It's Uh, after TORP, this was, a, this was a patient with unilaterally uh, resection, so I can't elevate him, and the incontinence was not uh, treatable. So I resected him, the other, the other adenoma on the other side, and then I see that 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 after resection, the ureter was mobile, and I can I can. Um, uh, repair the continent states with, uh, with uh, uh, so called fixed sling. Here, <laughs> this was a case they seen in the hospital in Milan that, that they work in a other. Uh, Room uh, next to my room, uh, it was a, a, a two bladder, and and I see this video, uh, and uh, the surgeon was uh, uh, resected the bladder uh, two more. Was uh, <laughs> he was practically not able to to enter the the the, the ureter. Because of 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 this uh, uh, this uh, you can see here very distal positioned here no look the balloon from the items um, uh, filled balloon is elastically transecting the urethra so but proximally we have a good urethra we can put also a, a fixed sling on the bulb. Otherwise, here, neurological, spina bifida, um, uh, child, um, not for all uh, conditions, is perfect to, to put a blade on the neck, uh, uh, a sphincter. So it can be good. Uh, these are patients, they, they catheterize their residual urine and incontinence, and you can put a sling in your perfect continent and catheterize. Before. Also, this condition is difficult, but you can have to repair this uh, stenosis with the dorsal only. You can put uh, 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 behind the ureter on the on the mid mid and proximal valve uh, advanced nasing, so you do not compress the, the blood 
uh, from from anterior the blood supply as the urethra the urethroplasty. Finally, you can see here a patient with uh, with uh, status post four years uh, with uh, um, symphysitis and uh, I, I construct him a ileal neobladder uh, with a continent uh, umbilical stoma. It is very performant and uh, had a, a good life quality. For this video, it's the video for the sling. This is the small incision uh, actually I do. And uh, if there are questions, so we can show a few moments of this uh, sling to uh, explain uh, also the um, uh, function of the sling, the functional ureter. Thank you very much. Okay, we can uh, go ahead with the next, proceed with the next presentation by Alessandro Giammo that will talk about adjustable slings for post-prostatectomy post incontinence. Please, Dada. Good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, your invitation uh, uh, and participation to this uh, uh, webinar or uh, surgical management of uh, uh, male incontinence, uh, in particular in complex cases. I will speak uh, about uh, adjustable sling. I am Alessandro Giammo, I work uh, in uh, Torino, Italy, and uh, one of my main topics uh, is uh, uh, male uh, incontinence. And uh, I uh, am a member of uh, Wallstream uh, uh, 2 of uh, European Reference Networks. This is my disclosures. Then, in uh, the 50 um, years, uh, the approach to male incontinence has changed very much for several reasons. Uh, one reason is because new devices have been introduced in the market, uh, because new concepts have been introduced, and one of these concepts was the possibility to adapt the compression on the urethra according to the patient's needs. The concept, uh, uh, this, this concept appeared uh, about 20 years ago uh, with the, the first adjustable device uh, called uh, uh, ProAct that was an external uh, bulking device. Later, the concept of adjustability um, uh, was applied uh, to some uh, slings. Um, unfortunately, uh, to date, uh, there is not a shared algorithm that uh, guides us uh, in the therapeutic choice of the different devices that are in the market, including the adjustable slings that are those for which the tension of the sling can be adjusted postoperatively. Uh, the only parameter uh, adopted by the guidelines, uh, and these are the uh, recent uh, guidelines of the uh, European Urological Association, is represented by the uh, uh, severity of the incontinence. In fact, uh, recommends the artificial sphincter for severe uh, incontinence and the fixed uh, slings for the mild moderate uh, incontinence but uh, the concept uh, of severity of incontinence is a limited uh, parameter also because its definition is uncertain in fact they say that the post prostatectomy uh, severity remain undefined so today, uh, the choice of a, a particular device is based on personal opinion, uh, opinions and uh, personal evaluation, or sometimes uh, based on the availability uh, and the cost of the device itself. 
but uh, conversely, decision making should be based on randomized trials. And the first step should be the non-inferiority test of each device to the reference technique that, the, that is represented by the artificial sphincter. And today this uh, uh, has only been done but uh, um, a, uh, a study called the master uh, study that compare the passive subletral synthetic slick to versus artificial uh, sphincter and provide for the first time a level one evidence-based uh, uh, reference of non-inferiority to artificial sphincter at 12 months. Uh, if we consider the fixed maze links, uh, they are considered safe, but uh, also uh, guidelines say that the efficacy is limited. Uh, in fact, they say that uh, um, there is a limited uh, uh, evidence that fixed transurator male slings improve post-prostatectomy uh, incontinence uh, in patients with mild to moderate incontinence. And uh, uh, also, patients with previous radiotherapy or transurethral surgery may have uh, uh, low uh, benefits from fixed uh, transurethral maze links. So may, uh, fixed uh, slings are a limitation and considering this limitation is uh, the question is there is a room there is a space for the adjustable slings if we consider the uh, guidelines, uh, the answer is no, because uh, there is limited evidence that adjustable maze links can cure or improve incontinence in men. And there is no evidence that adjustability offers additional benefit over other types of, of links. It, the, the reason is because most studies on adjustable links consist, consist in prospective or retrospective uh, limited studies. And therefore, no recommendation can be made at this time by the guidelines. But in uh, real clinical practice, are adjustable links useful or not? We can consider the three main systems that we have uh, used in, in men that are Remix system, Argo system, and Atom system. The Remix system is an adjustable uh, sling composed by a uh, monofilament uh, suburetra, suburetral uh, mesh connected to a suprapubic mechanical regulator called vario, varitensor. Uh, with two wire, uh, traction wire. Adjustment is uh, carried out through an external manipulator and this procedure is uh, mine invasive, but in any case, a skin incision is needed. Regarding the, uh, regarding, sorry. <laughs> Okay, regarding uh, the publications, uh, to date only two studies with conflicting findings have been uh, published. In uh, one study on 19 patients uh, reported uh, an high level of success with no expanse, no infection, no erosions. In a second study on 14 patients, uh, only 36% of patients were satisfied and mechanical failure was reported in 21% of cases. <laughs> Regarding the second adjustable sling, uh, that is Argus uh, Retropubic Argus T transobturator, um, this is composed of a silicon cushion attached to two silicon columns that are pasted with needle from the perineum to both inguinal areas through the obturator foramen or the retropubic area. During the procedure, the retrograde leak point pressure is adjusted to 35-40 centimeters of water using a uh, Stang column manometer. 
uh, regarding the adjustment, uh, this is performed under local anesthesia through the bilateral incision of both tape ends. Uh, in the same case, uh, in the case of urinary retention, the tape is released using the same bilateral incision. Uh, the data on Argos system has been uh, reported for 400 men, but only a few series have reported on more than 40 patients. Success rate varied between uh, 17 to 19 percent, with a mean of 70 percent reporting subjective cure. Uh, a head to head comparison between Argus uh, retropubic and uh, trans uh, inguinal uh, reported similar efficacy, but uh, Argus T was associated with an either inguinal pain and explantation rate. In this study, uh, was com were compared Argus and artificial sph uh, sphincter uh, on a, a small uh, number of patients. Uh, in this uh, court, Argus showed a similar success and complication rate to those of artificial sphincter. But this study has have a bias uh, that is a small number of patients analyzed uh, its retrospective design and uh, the lacking on questionnaire on quality of life or satisfaction after surgery. This study evaluated uh, um, the patient's choice. So given the choice between the two types of sling, uh, adjustable or fixed, more men choose adjustable over non-adjustable. Nevertheless, the overall satisfaction rate was similar on between the two groups. In this study, uh, compared uh, with a randomization advance uh, with Argus T. And Argus T seems superior in results uh, at um, 18 months uh, follow-up, but uh, it has also more complication uh, respect to the uh, our advanced sling. Regarding the complication, the study uh, reported at a high level complication, uh, about 60% uh, post-operative complication, and some of this complication has uh, a cl uh, high clavian dindo grade three or four. I find also this case report uh, with a sling related hydronephrosy uh, due to incorrect positioning of the Argus. So also this can happen. This is a personal uh, case uh, with a prepubic fistula that I solved only with the explantation of the device. The last device, uh, uh, adjustable device, is the Atoms, that is a mesh with integrated adjustable cushion via scrotal port. Uh, is a, te um, a technique with a moderate surgical invasiveness, uh, is a single incision, uh, and the transobturator passage out in uh, is not contraindicated in case of low ureter quality and adjustable adjustable is in uh, is adjustable in a patient office uh, this device look uh, looks like a sling but uh, it's to be considered an adjustable extra vitral bulking device we publish uh, our data uh, on 98 patients with a median follow-up of 21 months with a total uh, 18 percent uh, social continence and four patients explained due to scrotal port erosion and perineal pain and this is the, the uh, picture about the scrotal port erosion 
This data uh, are according with the, the international uh, uh, review and meta-analysis uh, published in uh, 2019 uh, on uh, 1,400 patients from 20 studies. Uh, they reported a 19% of improvement uh, with a significant 24-hour per test dec uh, decrease. Uh, the complication occurring in 60% of cases, but the major complication only in 3% of cases, and the explantation rate was six to, uh, 5 to 6 percent. In these unfortunate cases, but the urethra was found to be intact after the removal, like you can see in this picture. So the procedure can be considered completely reversible and does not preclude the possibility of a subsequent implant, for example, an artificial urinary sphincter. Thank you for uh, your attention. Okay, we can uh, move to the next presentation uh, by Roberto Lianas that we talk about uh, the role of artificial urinary sphincter in post-prostatectomy incontinence. Dear colleague, I am a very happy very to be happy able to, be to do, able this to do this presentation uh, uh, in, the, um, in, the, this, uh, in the European Reference Network about artificial sphincter in the therapy of the urinary incontinence after radical prostatectomy. Okay, this disclaimer, I am uh, uh, for the Boston Scientific uh, as, uh, as mentor. Uh, for the implantation of artificial sphincter and the extraction of uh, the medical doctor to this uh, operation. The artificial sphincter, like everybody knows, is a free component system with a balloon and a um, balloon with uh, a drug um, um, pressure uh, regulating balloon. This is connected with a pump and with a cuff. The sphincter in this uh, way now, now today we have is uh, like this uh, since uh, 1983. Is this a situation uh, in a, the, the sphincter like this? So we have a cuff, we have a pump, we have a balloon. In a normal situation, the sphincter is closed when the artificial sphincter is activated. And the balloon with the pressure closes the cuff. When the patient has to void, has to pump, and the cuff is um, empty, and the patient can void. This uh, uh, color is uh, about the uh, antibiotic surface impregnated uh, with rifampicin and minocycline. The balloon had a no impregnation. The artificial sphincter can be used in different position. Of course, can be used and blood and neck, of course, that is our neat uh, situation after radical prostatectomy, but it can use in the membrane ureta, very proximal, or in the bulbous with one calf, in the bulbous with two calves, and in spatial situation, transcorporal uh, sphincter. It's very important to know that all this situation, blood and neck, when it's there, possible, membranous, single calf and double calf, so like the transcorporal situation must be uh, used in like uh, from all the situations. So the patient can be first a membranous sphincter, a can kind of double calf and transcorporal in, uh, in, um, in a different uh, position. Very important is before to prepare uh, the patient is a uh, good history and a physical examination, and a urine must be sterile. Uh, it must be done on a voiding diary, the um, urophlow, the uh, X-ray of the 
urethra and the bladder. With the bladder, the tisto urethrography show if it's a, a present of a reflux. And urethrocystoscopy will show us the situation of the urethra, and we can choose in which place we, we will put the, the cuff. A neurodynamic examination, in my opinion, is very important because uh, you have to avoid to put a sphincter. This is just a substitution of the normal sphincter. In a bladder, they have a, a hyperreflex, and so will not get uh, in a continence like you want. The upper urinary tract have to be investigated with abdominal ultrasound or IFP. This is the way like uh, you can implant the membranous sphincter. Normally, I will implant with a perineal incision. We will uh, make the urethra free. You will inside it the uh, centrum tendon and you will get the position of the membranous urethra. It's a, like a position like when you do the the uh, urethroplastic in the membranous urethra uh, for an urethra stricture. And with another incision, you will put the balloon. I, put pre I prefer to put the balloon intraperitoneally and the pump in the scrotum. In this situation, you will have the pump, the cuff very proximal, like this, uh, uh, like show here in this image. The double cuff is a, um, a variation of the single cuff from the Scott originally, and is made about in 1990 from Brito. And uh, it's the, the, idea, uh, the idea is uh, to make the uh, sphincter longer with two, two cuffs. In this situation, we will put uh, 24 ml feeling of the balloon. This is a, a picture of the position of the cuff. There is distal. In this uh, situation we will do always when we have problem on blood and neck, like after biking agents, like after radiotherapy. Of course, after perineal prostatectomy, but it's uh, now seldom. And if you have a stricture of the blood and neck, you can put a sphincter in the membranous urethra. A special uh, position is the position the Webster show us in uh, 2002 with a transcorporal position. The transcorporal position allow more tissue because you will go with your calf and you will take a, a piece of the tunica albuginea. The artificial sphincter, like we saw in this picture, uh, we have a lot, some uh, variation in the feature of the sphincter, but the revision rate since 1985 uh, is still between 20 and 30%. The innovation was the IMS in 1983, the narrow back cuff in 1990, and the inhibitor, so the antibiotic coatic uh, sphincter. This is a very interesting uh, picture that show that you have to do more sphincter in here to have a very good confidence and to have less complications. So the complication is related for the operation from the, how many operations you will do in one here. What is the matter when you have a malfunction of the sphincter? You have two uh, problem, mechanical problem and problem due to the uh, medicine problem for the tissue. Like I told before, about 25 to 30% in the literature, you have complication. 
mechanical failure, atrophy of the urethra, erosion and infection. Erosion, the infection of the sphincter of most uh, together. The patient have to be always uh, to take a pass. So does, uh, if, if it's in a hospital, they know the indication for the implantation, when and the location, in which position. If the, another surgeon have to make a, a correction, have to know exactly, and does have to have always a pass. When the sphincter doesn't work, at first symptom is incontinence or have problem to avoid. You can avoid or they have problem. Or if it's an infection, we have the typical sign of uh, an infection with dolor, pain, co uh, color, warm, and uh, uh, rubber. The, the skin is red. When we make an examination of a center to see what's the matter, you will first you have to uh, look at the pump. It's the only the only part of the sphincter that you can have in your hand. If you look how much you have to push the sphincter to open the sphincter, and you have more pump. Let's say on the first time you have uh, free pump, then you have to pump or to push four, five. Does this a sign? As a, um, a sign of atrophy. If you have a very small, very fine, no one punch, and the pump is empty, this is a is a sign of leak of the skin. Uh, kinking of the of the tube is very very rare because the tube have a, a especially feature meet. Uh, and it doesn't happen anymore. So if you have a leak, you can find the place of the leak with the electric uh, control. Practically, you will fill the system and you will connect and you will see if there's a leak, you will uh, see that there's a passage of, uh, of uh, um, fluid in, in, in a tissue. So when you have this problem, you can change the leakage, the cuff, mostly is a leakage of the cuff. In this way, when you use the measure band, this is a special situation uh, where you have re um, recurrent uh, stenosis of the blood and neck. So you have to uh, correct the blood and neck. In this case, a very, very hard, very long. So this patient become a memo cut and after I'm, I'm an artificial sphincter. In this way, you can see is a contrast medium inside. I don't use any more the contrast medium because uh, since uh, 2018, is uh, the contrast medium that I use, the ultravis one that doesn't, doesn't produce any more. So I will put now just um, so, um, saline solution inside. If we look on the results of a lot uh, of uh, um, study, we see that the success, our, how is the success of this uh, device? The success is uh, uh, very good. So after 10 years, we have um, between 60 and 90% uh, of a social continent. With an infection and an erosion, this between five and 8% a big, uh, a big group of patients uh, that, uh, like we see, we see the erosion in about one third of the patient, malfunction in 
26% um, atrophy in about uh, um, 80, uh, 60, um, uh, nay, 26 percent. Mechanical complication are 8.5 percent. So we can see the long time results with artificial sphincter in big statistic. It's a, a very good and what is very important, the patient will become a continent with um, artificial sphincter. If has a complication like a leakage, uh, it will always ask, please change a part of the, uh, the, the sphincter because I was very good and I was very happy. Most of the patient use uh, one pet uh, just to be sure not to uh, lose urine. So in other studies, Statistic we see with long time, long statistic, where is a big follow up from 15 years. Uh, the about half of the patient of the, the, the um, sphincter are in place. In this statistic, just in 15 percent uh, was the um, sphincter explanted. And we see again in this long statistic and a long uh, survival rate. Another study, but uh, uh, we just uh, uh, confirm what we, we saw with a lot of uh, patients. And this is the typical complication, but we have to uh, explain the patient. In 30% of the patient, we have to do something in the next 10 years. So I am now uh, ready. If you have a question, I am uh, happy to be here. Thank you very much. I have uh, uh, some questions for the speakers. And uh, I want to start from Christian, so from, from the last presentation. Uh, Christian, you talked a bit about uh, irradiation so you know that uh, there is a lot of discussion in literature about irradiated patients some authors think that uh, irradiation is uh, an absolute contraindication for uh, slings fixed slings so what's your uh, your practice with these patients uh, your opinion uh, your advice implanting a fixed sling in irradiated patients Christian, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, so I, I was... Your question is a good, a good question. And uh, um, I look every patient with my dynamic cystoscopy and there are irradiated patients they lose not much urine. Uh, there are patients that I look the tissues. Uh, the tissues are not bad. The urethra is mobile. There are patients the radiotherapy target is more the bladder than the than the than the membranous urethra. There are selected uh, um, patients I can repair with with a sling. It's not it's not it's not the the ideal group and. Every uh, method is worse if the patient is irradiated. They had not a good blood supply. Also, compression had an end of time that, that the, the device uh, is useful and then you have to change because of uh, atrophy, because of, of erosions. And so uh, you must see, th but there is a, a uh, a small group that is ideal also i i have to i have to analyze the patient if the patient has had a good uh, bladder capacity if the patients lose not so much urine can uh, uh, um, um, control the stream and block the stream so um, 
evaluated, uh, with, uh, with uh, critically evaluated, we have also irradiated patients we can retreat very good with sling. And, uh, mm, so you should be this is a discussion, it's a discussion it's, not, it's not terminated. So the we message are. is that the irradiated patients are not uh, just one patient, not uh, uh, all similar, but uh, we can select those that uh, uh, have uh, better prognostic factors for uh, mainly in your experience based on cystoscopy. I understand. Yes, on, on cystoscopy and is needed a perfect implantation. It's very needed a perfect technical. What about uh, the reposition in test? Uh, repositioning test and after the, the sling has had to be implanted it's, it's not easy to implant a sling uh, also the passage transfer obturatorily exactly uh, the, 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 the tissues are not as mobile I, I implant more sphincters in, in, in irradiated patients but there are a small group of patients that can be indicated Okay, in my practice, I, I don't use slings, uh, fixed slings in irradiated patients with severe incontinence, in particular, yes. but uh, in patients with uh, uh, mild, moderate incontinence, uh, I think it's an option, especially, of course, in patients that uh, decline the, the implantation of artificial sphincter. I don't know if uh, Roberto is connected and Alessandro. Okay, Alessandro, I can. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, I can see you. So, um, the question from, for Ale Alessandro What do you think about uh, the use of adjustable slings in the setting of uh, patients that failed the previous fixed slings? Do you think that uh, in this group of patients that, of course, uh, want uh, or are looking for an effective definitive treatment do you think that adjustable slings could be an option in these patients that failed a previous fixed sling yes thank you emilio for your question yes i i think that uh, uh, one limit of the fixed slings in general or the fixed <laughs> device is that that uh, uh, they are techniques that uh, on off or work or not, does not work so you can, can cannot uh, uh, do nothing <laughs> if they doesn't work because there are several uh, outside uh, uh, christian you can put another sling you can also uh, 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 adjust uh, uh, with, uh, I think, uh, in uh, in a small time uh, from the the, the 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 surgery. I think, uh, Christian. But uh, the I think that uh, the great limits is uh, the that you cannot do nothing if the uh, they doesn't work and the, the compare pain or other problems. So. Uh, in these cases, I think that adjustable uh, slings, in particular, I use atoms, but also I, I think also Argusti is, could, could, can be an option. You you are in a different uh, place, uh, in the uh, more distal from the, uh, the the surgery of the previous sling. Uh, you can uh, try to remove, but it's not easy the uh, previous link and i put uh, uh, adjustable um, that i i think is more uh, um, uh, is less dangerous uh, is uh, because uh, you uh, you don't have to open uh, the bulbo spongiosus muscle with, with other so you have more uh, um, minor risk of uh, erosion in um, so, so I, I, I think I, I use, I have used uh, with a second option, uh, but uh, it's not easy to remove uh, the a previous link. This is my experience. I would like to hear the opinion of uh, Roberto on this, on this point. You mean, yeah, my opinion is so normally. 
I don't have a very moderate uh, incontinence here. When I have moderate incontinence, and I use the same system that the Christian said to uh, check, I will use a functional sling, I must say. It. And the results are very good when you have a very uh, virgin patient, no uh, fore operation, no blood and neck operation. In all the other cases, um, with severe incontinence of irradiated, I will use an uh, artificial sphincter. Also after urethroplastic, uh, I will do always urethroplastic dorsal, and then I will use a transcorporal sphincter. So uh, I think I, I don't use the compressive one, just uh, maybe the compressive one you can use in a patient on the very hold on the junk, you can try. but. I I feel the pity to 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 cover so much urethra and don't you have after this uh, operation no possibility to do something else very rare to remove um, a compression sling so this is my opinion and my experience but of course the compression is not new well, if you look at the Kaufman prothese there's a little bit all those holes together there was a compression and uh, like Russ said, we started to 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 push, and we push again. Uh, it's true, but I I am I like more the functionally uh, action of the sphincter. <coughs> Optimal will be if a sphincter at night you can open it. And sorry, I have <coughs> a cough, but. No, every patient is possible to deactivate the sphincter at night. That will be very good to a long, long, long uh, life of the sphincter. So uh, a very challenging group of patients is uh, those of uh, that of patients with uh, refractory stricture, especially refractory bladder neck strictures. Some uh, some authors call this uh, this situation as a devastated bladder neck. Uh, I would like to ask uh, to you, Roberto, and then also to Christian, what's your approach to these patients? So you talk about uh, MemoCat uh, in your presentations. Uh, mm, <laughs> what's your uh, your approach usually in these patients? Do you treat this patient? Uh, in uh, with one stage approach or with two stage approach so the memo cut was the extreme situation so first i will use endoscopy of course second i will do an anastomization with perineal prerectal position this patient is a patient a old patient who was operated with a big hematoma and an array anastomization I couldn't do. I leave the memo cut just one year and I remove after the memo cut. What you have to do is to look, but it doesn't happen any incrustation, but the incrustation will happen if you you have to be sure that not doesn't happen. This is a particular patient. But some case with recurrent uh, <coughs> blood and neck. I will use this situation. Uh, of course, my prefer is the reanastomization from perineal prerectal position. So that you have the urethra uh, safe for the later implantation. <coughs> I'm sorry. Do you use the epsilon V plastic in these patients? Epsilon V plastic, Epsilon V plastic, I use uh, um, contracted blood and neck after TOP. So when you have a place to, to make this, yes. I will do laparoscopy because I don't have robot, but you can do with robot if you like, extra peritoneal. But uh, and, by blood uh, and neck, normally you have a ring and uh, it's something else than a blood and neck contraction after TOP. If you cut the, this uh, ring, you will see when it's open after. Very important is preoperative, uh, like always. You have to be sure that you have place 
to do this operation. <coughs> so, Christian, what's your uh, approach to patients with the recurrent uh, stricture? Uh, I think that the strictures are different. If the patient is irradiated and had a recurrent stricture, um, it's it's a devastating problem. If the patient is not irradiated, um, then then there are a few strictures they endoscopically reclose, and uh, in my experience, it is it is better to approach via endoscopical uh, um, way, way trans transbladder from from uh, um, from the bladder side you see in my opinion better and you can more exactly incise and after I do a, a, a resection at six o'clock distal from this from the from the stenosis and I go cranially and I I, I, I do like a, a rectangular defect and I developed a, a whole needle curved and I do two sutures and I, co I do a mucosa to mucosa, but it's not possible in irradiated patients. In irradiated patients, if you have experience, you can do the uh, uh, um, anastomosis between urethra and bladder neck. Uh, cut it, it's, but it's, it's, and, and then you, you have only possibility to, to use a, a, a artificial sphincter, it's clear. It's the only only kind of of of, uh, of regain continence in these cases, but there are there are very different anastomoses. You have to look and uh, and uh, you have a lot of armaments. There are also patients that that epsilon V plastic is possible, but these are not so uh, <laughs> destroyed uh, cases. But but I I think that the approach from the bladder in a few cases is very is very um, very good. So an anterograde approach. Okay, and uh, another question for Alessandro. Uh, Alessandro, um, we know that uh, uh, complications after adjustable slings are more frequent compared to fixed slings. So when uh, we look at the complication, adjustable slings are more similar to the artificial sphincter. So are more complex uh, devices. Uh, don't you think that uh, use these uh, this type of device in the setting of uh, patients with uh, uh, some complications, irradiated or previous failed slings? So in, in this uh, group of challenging patients, uh, uh, will increase even more the complication rate or not? I don't know your experience. Yes. Uh, my approach to this uh, new device, uh, adjustable device, uh, born uh, for the gap represented by the irradiated patients and patients with the low quality uh, of the urethra. Because all the, these patients are bad candidates also for uh, fixed slings and also for artificial sphincter, because uh, we know that uh, also the successful, successful rate and uh, decrease also with artificial sphincter, and also the uh, complication rate increase. So uh, I think that the target for this adjustable technique are. Um, this kind of patients uh, with bad quality of, uh, of the urethra because you uh, you can uh, go uh, you can come on the urethra if you want uh, deflating the device and uh, uh, so you can uh, solve a, a subsequent uh, stenosis that is difficult to do this uh, with a, an artificial sphincter and a fixed sling. So my target uh, uh, for this, these adjustable zings are the, this kind of patients. Uh, I think that the maneuverability is more, more easy than with the other device. 
But in general, these patients that you described before are bad candidates for me for all device because uh, what you described about uh, urethroplasty uh, is not easy when you have uh, just uh, inserted a, a device, a, a, an artificial sphincter or a sling. Uh, so I, I think that there are not uh, good candidates in general. Okay, I think we have uh, still time for another question. Uh, just uh, I would like to ask uh, Roberto about uh, <clears throat> double cuff. I know that you like double cuff, and uh, what's uh, your indication to to this double cuff? Because you know that uh, some author uh, talk about, of course, I like that double cuff means a double risk of uh, complications. Okay. So why to put a double cuff? Yeah. So I use double cuff in all the case when we go uh, distal because you can use a loose cuff and that's a more very important because you use uh, not a very uh, compressive cuff but you make the, uh, the sphincter longer and less pressure. So we, we started to do this um, in a second time after one cuff, and that was a very long time ago, 1990, with Schreiter. But we saw when you put directly in uh, this case and double cuff, you have better results. Of course, at more cost, this is um, an important thing we don't talk about in this moment. And the use of a sphincter or the, another system is also uh, moved from the cost. If you have a system who paid this system to all the patient, it's easy to do. And then you don't have problem. You get the money from the system, from the insurance. Uh, this is also a very big important uh, phase. Uh, but I have a good uh, results with the double cuff in distal position because we use a less pressure. In a long time, the, our idea is that we'll be uh, a long life of the sphincter with a double cuff. But so I have also some case where the inside of the double cuff they get a stricture. So you have done after, because the urethra is a special uh, uh, organ and uh, you can have blood problem. The urethra doesn't like blood uh, supply problem and you have a stricture. Then you have to remove to make the urethroplastic and after you can do, uh, go transcorporally, very, very large uh, outside. But this is the way that uh, we, we think, but in this case, when you go distally, the double cuff has better results in our experience. Of course, keeps a lot of statistics. We say there are no difference, <laughs> more complications. Okay, so I think we can uh, conclude this very interesting webinar. I hope it was interesting and useful for all uh, attendees. And uh, on behalf of uh, all the speakers, I would like to uh, thank the Eurogian uh, Network for this opportunity. And uh, thank you to all the organizers for uh, this successful uh, webinar. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, thank Alessandro. You. Thank Bye. You, Roberto. See you. See you. Bye. See you. See you soon, Bye -bye. Uh, Roberto. Ciao. Thank you, everyone. Oh, oh, thank you.